In this video, we're gonna take our main menu that we created in the previous video and add this really nice intro transition animation to it that you'll see right here. You'll learn how to animate all these different buttons and how to use Godot's animation player to add this effect to your own menu. Let's get started. So in the previous video, we used a tween node to smoothly animate between our sub menus as we're going back and forth between them. Now what we want to do is add some animations to kind of give some life to our specific menus. So for example, when we open up our game, we want to have a main menu fade in animation or something like that, that will kind of give an effect to the player right upon starting the game. So that's what we're going to do now. Now we can also use a tween for this, but the flip side of using a tween, the nice thing about a tween is that you can use dynamic variables. You can uh, set things by code. You can get positions at a given time. It's, it's easier to do. Um, easier to work with dynamic variables and positions, but it's harder to work with visually because you can't see like, oh, I'm gonna drag my tween here and set a keyframe or whatever. So we're actually gonna add another node, an animation player and use Godot's built-in animation system in order to help give a nice animation to our main menu. So first thing we'll do is I'll come to our menu route, same as we did before, except with an animation player. I'll add this. And we're gonna start with just one animation for this one. I'm gonna say new, and this will say, uh, let's just say fade in. So this is gonna be the animation that plays right when our menu loads, and we wanna kind of make something dynamic where our main menu will fade in uh, progressively. So each, each label and each element will fade in over time. So in order to do that, let's set a time of three seconds. So we can change that later on, but we'll start with that. Now there's a couple of tracks I wanna add. We're assuming that our first menu this menu one is gonna be our main menu. And that's a safe assumption. We can hard code that into our animation here. And you'll have to edit it later if that's not the case, but it's totally fine to do that. So what I'm gonna do is add keyframes for our title option one button, option two, and option three button. So I'm gonna select all of these and I'm going to say location only. I'm gonna disable rotation and scale. I'm gonna add a keyframe. So we'll see this add four new tracks and insert keys, say yes. Now, these positions that I just added are the positions that all of these buttons are gonna have um, when our menu is done animating, when it's done popping in. So what I wanna do is actually select all four of these keys and drag them to the end of our animation because they're gonna be um, so what, what the state of our animation at the end. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so we can see a little bit more fine-grained our animation. And so what I want to do is I'm going to, while I still have these four keys selected, so reselect them if you need to, I'm going to move our, our time to maybe about 0.2 and I'm going to say duplicate keys. And so I'm going to, now we're going to have another four keys and these are all the same, right? It's if I play this animation, it's same position, start to finish. But what I want to do is kind of tier these. So I want them all to fade in from the top or from the bottom, and I want them to happen at different times so it looks kind of dynamic. So first, our title needs to appear before any of the others. So I'm gonna move our title back to, let's give it a half sec, uh, yeah, we'll give it a half second. And we want our title to kind of swing down from the top. So I'm gonna give a Y value of say, uh, uh, 200 we'll say. And I also want this to ease a little bit um, or, or to kind of not just be a linear slide down. So I'm gonna change this to be cubic. And so now we'll see if I play this. Oh, whoops, I always forget. So this needs to be negative 200 since up is negative in the negative Y direction. So now if I play this, we'll see that our, our title kind of slides in from the top, which is perfect. Once our title's there, then we wanna start doing something similar with our regular buttons. So I'm gonna make all of these last about, um, eh, that's good, we'll just do this. And we'll make them all kind of progressively step in like so. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this right here, it's nothing scientific. Uh, this needs to be one longer, I think this needs to be one shorter. So now we've got this nice step animation and for all of these, um, we, we need to keep track of where, of which Y value these have at the beginning but I think, let's start with option one. So we need our option one button to end with a Y value of 78, but if we have this come up from the bottom, then we can add 200 to it. So 200, 78, we'll do the same for all of these. So this is 145, so this will be 345, and then this one is gonna be 
uh, oh geez, oh 412, wow, math was not there for a second. So if we do this, we'll see that all of these um, slowly fade in. The problem is that up until this point, all of these um, buttons, their position is where you know where they last were where they ended off so what i need to do is select all of these starting keys here go back to the beginning and duplicate them and you might be asking why can i not just um why can't i just drag these back to the beginning and the reason we're not going to do that the reason we're duplicating these keys is because we only want our buttons to animate within this short time frame if you move it, if you get rid of these keys or move them back to the beginning here, then what's going to happen is that the rate at which the buttons move is going to be much slower because it's covering that same amount of distance, but in almost three times the amount of time. So the rate is going to be much slower, a much smaller velocity. So we want them to stay put until they get to right here and then to animate quickly. So we'll see them all start to move up just like that. So just like that, we've made a very easy, simple animation that looks good. I'm going to change all these to cubic. What it does is it just kind of, if we use a cubic function to move between values, it kind of just gives a little bit more dynamicism. Yeah, you see right there, they kind of slow and start. Um, so this looks good. The only thing that can make it better, though, is if we couldn't really see any of these or they faded in as well. So what I'm going to do is select all of these, and I think it's going to let me do this and have a visibility. Um, can I? Oh, it won't let me key value it. Well, anyway, so what's going to happen is I'm going to bring us back to the beginning here, select our title, and I'm going to go to our visibility, and I'm going to add a modulate key for our title. I'm going to do the same thing for all three of these. So you can't, you can't do that if you select multiple, but I'll just do each one individually. Okay, so I've gone through and added a modulate track for each of our four elements, the title and the three buttons. And so now I'm going to select all of these modulate uh, keys, which are at the beginning, and I'm going to right click on duplicate and move these back just to the start here. And so we're going to need to do a couple things here and we'll, we'll just use our title as kind of our first one. So we want all of our elements to be basically transparent right at the start and then be, and then fade in as they move. And I'm going to stagger this a little bit in front of whenever they start moving so that we can't see them until they've already progressed and moved a little bit. So if I come to the beginning, um, I, I, need, I need to duplicate this as well. So I'm going to come here and whoops, hit select this, then right click and hit duplicate key. Again, the point of this is that we only want the color to start transitioning near the end of our animation. So let's move that back a little bit, actually. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we're gonna do a similar thing for all of these. So for all these colors for our buttons, I want them to start off as totally transparent. And I want them to remain transparent. Um, actually, let me duplicate these over here and we can adjust them. And I want them to remain transparent right until about when they start moving. So let's move all these keys up to right after they start moving. I'll, oh, whoops, I only want to select one. I'll adjust it till right after, till right after. And then here, we'll make them become totally visible right when they reach the end of their uh, movement animation. Oh, and whoops, it looks like I accidentally, somehow this update mode is set to discrete, but it should be continuous. Okay, so now if I zoom in and we watch this animation, we should see that we've got a really, really nice fade in animation for all of our menu items. And look at that, that's just a nice way to um, to just kind of get our menu on the screen and, and working for the player. So what we can actually do in our menu route here to make this happen is I'm gonna add a reference to our animation player, I'll just call it anim, this will be animation player. And then when we're ready, we can say anim.play, fade in and so now when I open our game and press command R here we'll see look at this animation it's great and we can move around and we've got all these buttons at work um, you know there are things you can do like for example I believe that if I run this again we can actually use these options before the animation is over 
which isn't a huge deal because it's so quick, but you could disable all these buttons. If you really had an animation you wanted to finish, you could disable all these buttons until the animation is, is done. But we won't do that. But for now, this is what we've got. We've not only got nice transitions between menus, but now we've got a really nice fade in animation. And all of a sudden, our main menu is looking a heck of a lot better and more dynamic and more fun to use. It's not just something you're trying to get through to get to your game. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, a like and subscribe to support the channel are always appreciated. We'd love to have you in our Discord server and you can ask any questions you have about the tutorial there. The link to that is in the description. And if you found my work helpful, donating a coffee through Buy Me A Coffee helps me continue to make great and free Godot tutorials. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.